He warned us for days. Jason Nightingale drove around Chicago telling his Facebook Live audience he was going to kill people, blow up his whole community, even flashed his gun. Tonight, three people are dead, four others wounded, and we are looking into possible missed warning signs. Let's get to our Jamont Terry on this. And Jamont, he said it over and over again. Marie, days later, questions remain as to why it took so long to catch this gunman as he drove from Chicago to Evanston, randomly shooting people. And tonight we examine if someone could have stopped this sooner. I'm going to just blow up the whole community. This is Jason Nightingale ranting on Facebook for several days, including the day of the deadly rampage. He talked about his intentions to hurt people. This is going all lose, y'all. On Saturday night, Nightingale turned his thoughts into action when police say he shot seven, killing three while driving from Chicago to Evanston. There are different reasons for people engaging in violent behavior. Loyola professor of psychology and criminal behavior, Arthur Loriggio, says while many may have seen the accused gunman's rants. Just viewing someone behaving in a threatening manner on Facebook or some other social platform isn't uh, likely to provide you with enough information to make a plausible risk assessment about the likelihood that they will commit future violence. But Loriggio adds, if loved ones saw these videos, then possibly preventative steps could have been taken. And I've knew, known him for years, and I can conclude this is very uncharacteristic. This is a very serious, uh, although ambiguous threat this needs to be followed up upon. Nightingale's family refused to talk to CBS2 and only said, quote, they are sorry, but would not elaborate. We don't know if anyone called authorities to report the post, where he clearly talked about carrying out acts and showed weapons. The uh, anger that was being expressed by this young man seemed much more ambiguous, more of a, of a general expression of rage. Now, a motive into this deadly rampage is not known, but Loriggio points out that people should not be so quick to point to mental illness. He says that crimes like these are rarely linked to mental issues solely, and we may never know considering officers killed this young man in Evanston. Reporting live in the loop tonight, Jermont Terry, CBS2 News. Marie. Thank you, Jermont. Tonight, there are three families deeply grieving a loss from that deadly shooting spree. The victims are 46-year-old Aisha Johnson, a security guard working in Hyde Park, 30-year-old Yiren Fan, who was a Ph.D. candidate from China. Anthony A.J. Falker was shot and killed at a convenience store.